Hey, what's happening, guys? Running Man here. I'm in Philadelphia, and uh, just sitting here with Stingray and a friend of mine, Jason. I'm going to put up a interview we did yesterday about his business, which I think you'll find very interesting. How he travels seven months a year and has a very good life, and his business supports him. So that's pretty rare. Spends a lot of time in Thailand, Central America, uh, Cuba, wherever he wants to go. To be honest, so look forward to that in the next ep- in interview, uh, next episode. Uh, but uh, we were watching the news. We were watching uh, actually we on in Indian news, and they were talking about rare earths. And uh, I was really surprised because I lived in China for so long. Rare is a big topic in Asia, in China, especially in China. And so I'm very up to date on it. And I was surprised that Stingray, which who usually knows what's going on, had no clue about what this whole issue is. And just in the spirit of issues that a man should understand about life. I think this type of issue is important enough that I want to give a quick overview just to get an idea of what's going on. And this is like basically benefit from my knowledge of Asia and international, you know, stuff. Because when you get in one country, you just get so, I don't know, even being back in America, sometimes I feel so locked in already, you know, like I don't hear the international news as much as I usually do. But this is the stuff that rules the world, right? So, Rare earths, what are they? Why are they important? Why would I even talk about it? Rare earths are in everything. So if you want to talk about things you use, like the cell phone I'm recording on right now, uh, the TV, uh, anything, the modem, any, any, almost any electronic uses rare earths, even your earbuds, right? And of course, the important electronics like mis- missile defense, rockets, uh, electric cars, uh, Priuses, you know, any kind of hybrid Tons of rare earths. They use tons of rare earths. So what are they? Why are they important? I guess the way to look at it, I'll just try to present it in, in like a way that you can, the best way to understand it. The best way to understand is that rare earths are not rare. They're quite common. Okay, but the problem is this. They're kind of everywhere. The problem is they're hard to mine and they're very dirty to mine. So the U.S. used to lead the world in rare earths with a company called Molycorp, which was, I think, in Nevada. Uh, there's an old mine uh, by Molly Corp, and they were the world's largest rare earths. And then the environmentalists started to clamp down on them, saying, "You guys are too dirty. You know, can't you know you can't put this and that and blah blah blah." And I don't want to put down environmentalists, but at the same time, I want to tell the truth. The environmentalists drove the rare earths industry out of the United States, no doubt about it. What was the result? Well, the result was not good, and the result is actually extremely bad because. There was no balanced view of rare earths. Rare earths are essential. If you stop, you know, like, let's say, exporting rare earths to America, our whole defense system collapses. We cannot make missiles. We cannot fight a war. There is no, there are no uh, alternatives to rare earths. It's absolutely by the balls. That's the way to think about it. Okay, so why don't we just make rare earths? When, let's start making rare earths. So, okay, let me, actually, it's a very complicated issue. Okay, so... Molly Corp was quite dirty, and they were putting a lot of poison in the, in, in, in the environment. That is true. The thing is, they're not clean to make, at least back then. So they went to China. China also does a very dirty form of rare earth mining. So there's a lot of poisons dropped in the environment. But China doesn't care because they know it's like really important. Like you, a country needs this. There's certain things that you just need to do in life, and rare earths is one of them. You got to have rare earths. Even if it causes poison, even if it's like really a pain in the ass, you need this stuff for any modern economy. So China has understood this as a strategic. The U.S. saw it as a company specific thing. We didn't see it as a national security issue, which it is. Rare earths are 100 percent a national security issue. But we didn't see it that way. So we closed Molly Court and then China started mining them. And now China controls 90 percent of the rare earth market. OK, now. And back when there was the Japanese anti-Japan riots in in China about 10 years ago, uh, China started to limit exports of rare earths to to Japan. And the the Japanese economy is absolutely dependent on rare earths. So they really had Japan by the balls. I don't know what happened behind the scenes, but I'm sure that Japan had to bend over at some level because there's really no... There's no way they could have just stood up to him and said, oh, don't send us any rare earths. We'll make our own. Because Japan discovered a huge, huge quantity of rare earths underneath the ocean. 
uh, like massive. It's a really, I think it's enough to power the world for 900 years or something. It's like huge amount of rares. The problem with rares is this. There's a lot of, they're, they're, they're not rare. Like I said, there's a lot of them. Why are they rarest? They're, they're rarest because they're so, they're difficult to mine because there's very like, trace quantities. So you have to go through a lot of dirt to get them. So they're, they're kind of everywhere and they're kind of hard to find, mm-hmm. right? And they're dirty. Now there's new ways to mine rare earths, which I'm hoping, I, I understand that the current administration understands the value of rare earths, so they're gonna try to open Molly Corp again. The problem is this, is that it takes like seven years to get a mine up and running. It takes a long time to get, so you can say, okay, we're gonna open Molly Corp, and then in 2028, you'll start getting rare earths, which is like, you can't even go without these things for one month. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's, it's a very, the U.S. is in a bad situation right now. And so is Japan, and so is Germany. Everybody is in a bad situation. India has rare, except, except for China. China's in a great situation. So how did China start to, China started to, uh, what do you call it, like basically weaponize many things that no one thought of weaponizing before. Because the U.S. never thought of this. They just like had let the private companies handle it. And then, you know, they don't make money. The environmentalists, you know, close them down. They, it becomes too expensive. They let them go, you know. This is not wise. And China understood this. And so they started to uh, offer. This was when I left China. So let's say 2014 or so. 2013. I can't remember when it was. 14 probably. They started to offer discounts on rare earths if you if you opened up factories in China. So not only did they play games with export, but they also offered discount mm-hmm. if you bring all your technology and investment to China. So if you take your latest electric car, which is going to be your latest model, it's going to be your, your highest technology, and you make it in China, then you can get the rare earths super cheap and super easy. Whereas nowhere else in the world can you do that. Right? Mm-hmm. So... They had leverage both for bringing manufacturing to China and also bringing the best manufacturing, the stuff that you want. You know, you don't want the dirty old AM receiver, you know, making a CD player production, right? You want something like the latest, something technology, something's going to teach your local engineers how to make the latest stuff and, you know, that kind of stuff, right? So China did that. And a lot of people actually took the bait and did start manufacturing in China. Uh, but these are the kind of things that are so sensitive that you don't even read about it. And companies don't even hardly announce it because they don't want to look like they're bending over. But this whole thing is going on in front of, like underneath the surface, mm-hmm. right? It's, but it's, I think as a man, it's really important to understand the world. So you can see, you can understand like, the, the incredible complexity to geopolitics. Mm-hmm. Um, and again, this is not saying anybody's good or bad. This is just the story of what's actually going on. So... My guess is, and I think there was some kind of, somebody said that, that, that Trump was going to uh, nationalize Molly Corp and then open that like permanent, so we'll always have, and also they were going to open it up with the latest technology, so like not dirty mining. There's a, there's a way to do rare earths clean now, and of course it's more expensive. Okay, so India right now, I just watched a thing on India, they have a lot of rare earths and they had their first rare earth company back in 1953 or something which is incredible the government could see rare earths were important back then in the space race time right so and india wants to get into it because it's a it's a 16 billion dollar industry but i think the key thing that a lot of people don't understand is this is not a money business this is a difficult dirty expensive complicated uh environmentally unfriendly necessary business basically and that's what it is that's why you want to have rare earths so my feeling is that every country should have some kind of rare earths mining you know japan should start to you know mine the under underground the u.s should definitely get molly corp to be the world's premier uh you know environmentally friendly uh efficient mine like where it's like the u.s is this gold standard for it and basically we should be willing to lose money because we don't care. Like this is like essential for our, our, our economy. Like so, Molly Corp should be pumping out rare earths very cheap and very cleanly, and a lot of them. And I don't know who's going to foot the bill on that, but it's not that much money. It's only a sixteen billion dollar global industry. So let's just say it's a couple of billion dollars in subsidies, 
whatever. You know what I mean? Like, you need missiles. You need iPhones. You can't have anybody having you by the ball. So that's kind of my take on the rare earth thing. There's, there's a lot other stuff going on under the surface. You know, there's a lot of secret deals going on. There's, like I said, there's kind of rare earths everywhere. You know, India has them. Uh, Canada has a lot of them. Uh, the U.S. has a lot of them, especially in Nevada, I believe. Uh, China has China has about a third of the world's reserves. Um, and I always thought they were in the desert in Xinjiang area, but they're apparently not. Apparently, they're in Inner Mongolia and also in Sichuan, and then down down south, actually in in like Shenzhen area. So they're kind of everywhere. Um, so anyway, I just thought that would be some topic you might be interested in, and just one more piece of the puzzle. So when you look at when you look at global affairs, you know you will understand that it's so. I, I, that why I'm so interested in these things is because they're not like a lot of U.S. politics, where it's just like two people yelling at each other. There's actually real things happening. There's real, there's real minds. You know, there's real materials and there's real strategy going on. Mm-hmm. And I think it's important. The more people understand this, then the more strategic the populace will vote and so that's why i think it's important you know for wherever you are whether you're in africa or whether you're in in uh, australia where there's a lot of mining i don't i don't know about australian uh, rares but i would guess there's a lot in australia because australian you know that australia if you don't know it's like really the capital of of, of like raw material mining yeah, yeah. It's out west. the western part is like, as the, as oh yeah they kept, Perth. that's how they, they survived the entire 2008 uh, with didn't even care. Right, right. So it's all mining, and China gets a lot of their, most of their uh, minerals from Australia. So it's like they have a relationship that is, is a, it's, a, it's a tough one, because China stops buying for a while, but then they don't find a good supplier. They go back to Australia. Australia feels overly dependent, you know, mining and, and minerals, and, you know, these type of uh, commodities are quite interesting. But I, I would have to say the king of all of them is rare earths, the most interesting one, because mm-hmm. it's just the one that is used in the most, the tip of the arrow type of stuff, the stuff that you absolutely need. So if you're going to vote, you know, I would say vote for uh, Molycorp being nationalized or somehow run by somebody very smart. I know that Tesla is getting into mining, they announced with their battery day, I believe. So some smart companies are starting to get into mining and people are starting to understand in general the value because when you start to make batteries you need to have those minerals you need to make sure you have a you can't get fucked over on the price of those batteries right Mm -hmm. so it's kind of like mining is kind of like essentially like opec was in the 70s maybe you know in the 70s like opec controlled the u.s economy by the price of gas and when they raised the price of gas there was these huge gas lines there was a big oil shock that's kind of the situation with mining today that we're looking at. That's why I thought it would be an important issue or an interesting issue for. So I'd love to hear what you think, and I'll just keep this one short. And uh, short but sweet, we're heading out to uh, heading out to Jersey here pretty soon, uh, maybe tomorrow. But Philly's been great, and I hope you enjoy the footage, and I hope you enjoy uh, the interview uh, with Jason that I'll put up uh, later on today. So anyway, thanks for watching, guys.